paleontologists can make mistakes sometimes. And the thing is, with the scientific method, that's okay. Because you can always find new evidence that helps to better illuminate what was actually happening in the fossil record. No one's going to get it perfectly 100% all the time, it's just a matter of getting it right eventually. And that seems to be the case with the fossil Cryptoveranoides, which was described late last year as a very, very early lizard, but also importantly, a late branching lizard. Meaning essentially, the first lizards that branched were things probably very similar to geckos. Meanwhile, this was said to have been a varanid lizard, or at least very closely related to the varanids. These are things like the Komodo dragon, or the Parenti, or many of the other large monitor lizards that are found throughout Asia, Africa, and Australia. Cryptoveranoides, though, came from the Triassic, which would kind of throw a wrench into everything we thought we knew about lizard evolution. Like I said, from what we've already thought we knew, it seemed like the Varanids were super, super late arriving lizards. They really weren't around until the Cretaceous, millions of years after Cryptoveranoides would have existed. So it's really, really wild to say, hey, look at this, a new Varanid from when maybe the first lizards were showing up. It would suggest that potentially lizards evolved much, much earlier. However, that also just begs the question, is this actually a Varanid lizard? And that's what this new paper tried to show. And they did that with a lot of different researchers, including some who are just Triassic specialists, and some who are lizard and archosaur specialists. And that way they could try and really understand what Cryptoveranoides might have been. Starting with this image, you can see the pectoral girdle of four different animals. First, there's a living lizard, the rough-scaled plated lizard. And then there's a fossil lizard, Tijibuna, then Cryptoveranoides, which was CT scanned to produce this model, and finally, a fossil of Proterosaurus, which was once thought to be a relative of lizards, but now is identified as one of the earliest diverging archosauromorphs, the archosaurs being the groups that would lead to things like the crocodilians and the dinosaurs and the birds. One clear difference here is in the scapula coracoid fenestra, which is this hole in the modern lizard, which while buried in the fossil lizard specimen, is likely present. Meanwhile, Cryptoveranoides and Proterosaurus entirely lack that feature. This suggests that Cryptoveranoides is probably closer to the Archosauromorphs rather than something like the lizards in the group Squamata. This is also just one very clear and obvious example. They tested a lot of different features on the fossil of Cryptoveranoides, and they tested it with three different phylogenetic matrices, which all find fairly similar things but look at entirely different characters. And each one of those three came up pretty consistently that Cryptoveranoides is an early branching archosauromorph. In fact, it might be really close to the Trilophosaurids, which some people have recently suggested that the Trilophosaurids may have been lizards before lizards, and I use that loosely. Essentially, behaviorally, it seems like they had a lot of adaptations to kind of be lizard-like generalists in their environment. What this means is that Cryptoveranoides probably wasn't a lizard and instead a lot closer to dinosaurs and crocodilians. Not super, super close to them, but still closer to those lineages. It also means that we don't have to throw out an entire field of science of molecular genetics. Genetic testing has shown that the lizards probably got their start right around the time Cryptoveranoides would have been living 220 million years ago. But again, the Varanids would have started much, much later, either in the late Jurassic or the early Cretaceous, so hundreds of millions of years later potentially. This is really, really good for understanding that no, molecular genetics are actually perfectly reasonable and do fall in line with the data most of the time. There's a few outliers here or there, but in general, it's a really good tool for us to be able to predict what fossils might actually be out there at a particular time. And while Cryptoveranoides made us pause for a moment, seems like that was more of a mistake on the initial authors rather than the second authors, which again, happens. Science. What are you going to do?